Okay, so first up, let's get the starter fed. I'm adding 150 grams of water to my bowl, followed by 150 grams of my starter. And after a quick stir, I'll add in 150 grams of white flour. Now my feeding routine is always the same. As I bake on a daily basis, this quantity is perfect for sourdough breads, muffins, crumpets, whatever I'm up to really. But you can alter the feeding schedule to suit you. Now my kitchen is about 18 degrees Celsius today, that's about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So my starter will take around six hours to get to its peak and just before it peaks, I'll pop it in the fridge until I'm ready to use it. So into the bowl I'm adding 220 grams of room temperature water, followed by 10 grams of sea salt and then it just needs a quick stir. This quantity of dough will be enough to make two pizzas both around 300 grams. Now the hydration will be 75% and I find that the best for this style of pizza, but I'll also leave the recipe for a 70% hydration dough in the description. Now remember that different flours will absorb water differently, so you may need to make a few tweaks to the water content. I'll leave some notes about that in the description too. Once the salt has been dissolved, add 100 grams of your starter and give it a quick mix. Now I don't break my starter down all the way as this is going to happen during the long fermentation period. Next we'll add 290 grams of strong flour. My flour is an all-purpose flour by Robin Hood. It's got a protein content of 13% but you can experiment with different flours. This is just my go-to flour and I like the workability of the dough and the texture once the pizza is cooked. Whoop, nearly forgot the olive oil, so a quick 15 gram splash and then mix all the ingredients. Now I'm all for letting time do the hard work, so I'm just going to bring this together into a shaggy mess and cover it. That's it. Now times are going to vary depending on your climate, so you need to play around and adjust as necessary. But here's my schedule. I'll cover the dough well and I'll pop it in the fridge until 10 o'clock tonight. Then I'll remove it from the fridge and leave it out at room temperature to continue fermenting. Now my nighttime temperature is around 10 degrees Celsius, that's 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So this will take around 12 hours at room temperature, which means it's going to be perfect for the filming tomorrow. So here we are after the 12 hour proof and as you can see the dough is super active. Now the objective here is to try not to smash the dough around too much and completely degas it. So dust the work surface well, release the edge of the dough from the bowl and let it gently drop down onto the bench. Judge where you're going to divide the dough into two and cover that imaginary line with flour. This is going to stop the bench scraper sticking to the dough too much when you cut through it. Now the dough is quite sticky so using a light touch fold the edges over and bring it into a rough ball. The dough won't stick as much to the bench scraper, so use that to bring the dough into a tighter ball. Try to do this lightly, we don't want to tense the dough up or knock all of that air out of it. Pop the dough balls onto a baking tray that's been dusted with flour and cover well with a plastic bag to stop them drying out. These are going to sit out at room temperature to expand and in my kitchen this took two hours. So my tomato sauce is really simple for this style of pizza. I use a really good quality Greek tomato that's already been grated. I add some basil leaves that I've rinsed, some black pepper and some sea salt. And then I just let this sit for around 20 minutes or so. And that basil starts to perfume and flavour the tomatoes. Now of course you can use whole tin tomatoes and crush it down with your hands. And this will give a variation in texture. I remove the tomatoes from the juice and use the juice for something else. And then I season it in exactly the same way with fresh basil, salt and black pepper. So the pizza is going to take around 7 minutes to cook in the oven and I don't want the mozzarella to turn into a sauce. So I prefer to use a low moisture mozzarella and rather than grate it I like to dice it into cubes as it takes longer to melt. Once your dough has risen and feels light and puffy to the touch, you're ready to shape and bake. Dust your dough and the worktop generously with flour. Now make sure you dust to the edge of the dough ball, so as you slide the scraper underneath, the flour will go with it. 
And when you do slide the scraper underneath, you wanna do a quick and confident motion and then turn it upside down on the countertop, but just being careful not to degas it. Now try to remember which was the top of the dough as you want to finish shaping with this surface facing up before you add the ingredients. Now using your hands and your fingers, you'll push the air to the edge of the dough, creating a bulge where the air gathers around the edge. Flip the pizza over and repeat this on the other side. And when you flip the base this time, rotate it 90 degrees and repeat the process. Now don't stress too much about the technique. The idea is just to flatten out the base, pushing the air from the center to the edges, and that's gonna create the crust. There are many, many ways to do it, so practice different techniques and see what works for you. When you've got a rough circle that's pretty flat, you can pull it onto your pizza peel. Do it confidently, but gently so you don't tear it. I prefer to use this wood peel that I made from just a piece of old ply. The pizza slips really easily on it. If you don't have a peel, you could lay the dough onto some nonstick baking paper and use a flat tray to transfer it to the oven. Top the pizza with the sauce and the cheese, but don't go too heavy near the center. Don't hang around doing this. The quicker you are, the less likely the pizza is to stick to the peel. Gently pull the pizza out a little and try to maintain that round shape. Quick grind of black pepper and a sprinkle of sea salt and you're good to go. Now I'm baking this on a baking steel, but you could use a baking stone and the steel is situated on the top third of the oven. The oven's been preheated with the steel inside to its highest setting for about 45 minutes. I'm using the bake function, which is heat from the top and the bottom, but no fan. And the pizza is going to take around seven minutes to cook, but you'll need to keep an eye on it. Now during the cook, rotate the pizza once to make sure it cooks evenly. Now I don't like cooking the pizza until the crust is too dark because for me, the base then becomes overcooked, but this is completely down to personal preference. You can experiment with what works for you, but once my crust starts to go brown, I whip it out and I can finish it with a gas gun for a bit of charring if I want, but that is completely optional. So by hitting that right hydration and not overcooking this pizza, we've got a really nice char on the base, but it's still flexible. It's not kind of overcooked and crispy like a biscuit. The crust is well cooked, and with a bit of a blast from a gun, you can get some nice charring on it. But most importantly for me, you've got this lovely fresh tomato taste. They've not been overcooked, and the mozzarella's melted, but it's not been completely nuked. Well guys, that's it from me today. If you give this a go, then do let me know what you think. And if you make any tweaks to make it suit you, then I'm always up for hearing about those too. That's it guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.